don't know me, I am the uh, team leader of the spiritual leadership team, and it is my pleasure to um, have this uh, message for you today and be able to present it to you. But before we do, I'm going to invite you into a few moments of meditation this morning. So I'm going to invite you to get in your chairs, get comfortable, allow the uh, seat back to support you, allow your feet to rest firmly on the floor, and put your arms in a comfortable position either in your lap or by your side. I'm going to invite you to just gently close your eyes and to take a couple of centering breaths here this morning as we get started in this meditative space. Breathe in. Breathe in to this divine presence that lives and moves and has its being in you. Breathe in to this sense of peace and relaxation that is the center of your being. I'm going to invite you just to take a few moments here to just think about your body and just relax your body even more in this moment. So if you were noticing any place of tension, any place of stress, maybe in your neck or in your jaw or, or in your shoulders or back, I just invite you to release that just a little bit more today. Allow yourself to relax. Relax into the peace, the presence, the wisdom of this divine entity that is you and is everywhere present. Relax into this being, into this knowingness. As we enter into our time of meditation, I want to remind you of your ability to receive that self-knowledge, that wisdom, that inspiration, that understanding. It is available to you. And so I'm gonna share with you a poem from one of my favorite poets, Khalil Gibran. And a man said, speak to us of self-knowledge. And he answered saying, your hearts know in silence the secrets of the days and the nights, but your ears thirst for the sound of your heart's knowledge. You would know in words that which you have always known in thought. You would touch with your fingers the naked body of your dreams. And it is well you should, the hidden wellspring of your soul must needs rise and run murmuring to the sea, and the treasure of your infinite depths would be revealed to your eyes. But let there be no scales to weigh your unknown treasure, and seek not the depths of your knowledge with staff or sounding line, for self is a sea boundless and measureless. Say not, I have found the truth, but rather I have found a truth. Say not, I have found the path of the soul. Say rather, I have met the soul walking upon my path. For the soul walks upon all paths. The soul walks not upon a line, neither does it grow like a reed. The soul unfolds itself like a lotus of countless petals. I invite you to consider your soul, that divine presence within you, that lotus that you are that is unfolding even as we speak. Ask your inner self, who have I come here to be? Who have I come here to be? Give yourself a moment to listen. Who have I come here to be? 
I have come here to be many things, but I have also come here to be guided with a willingness to listen that indwelling divine guidance becomes available to me every moment of every day. The still, small voice is eternally whispering its blessings and needs. In the quiet, it can be heard. By entering the silence of your heart, listening with an attitude of gratitude and openness, you gain access to the guidance that is always ready to illumine the next step of your path. I invite you to consider the following affirmations. I release the illusion that I am alone. I enter the stillness of my heart and listen to the voice of the inner divine presence. I trust in this divine presence to guide me every moment of this day. So take a few moments to enter the silence of this divine presence and to listen. Ask yourself the question, who have I come here to be? have I come here to be? Give yourself a few more moments to breathe in to any realizations that have come to you through this moment of silence. Say thank you to that internal divine presence that lives and moves and has its being in and as you. Say thank you to this beautiful expression of life, this unique expression that you have come here to be. There is no one quite like you. Say thank you for this inner wisdom, this inner understanding. As you gently bring your awareness back to your body temple, beginning maybe with fingers and toes, I invite you to just add in a little gentle movement here this morning. Maybe you wiggle fingers or toes, maybe you roll your wrist or roll your ankles and just allow gentle movement to come back to your body temple. Maybe you roll your shoulders or roll your neck. Just add in a little gentle awareness. And when you're ready, and only when you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes and join us back in this space this morning. Thank you for taking that journey into self-awareness, into self-knowledge. 
This month, our theme has been about the way showers in our life. Uh, the first week, Bill Warner shared the way showers of his journey, both of his human journey and his spiritual journey. And of course, there were two, there are so many that he couldn't share all of them with us, but he shared a few with us. And then I shared a little bit about the way shower that has been really important to me, the Buddha. And then last week, our own Bill Warner gave a fantastic presentation on the way of Jesus and the secret teachings of Jesus. So if you missed last week, if you've missed any of the weeks of this month's series, I invite you to check those out on our Facebook page or on YouTube. And if you didn't miss them, you can always go back and re-listen. So over this month, I've spent some time reflecting, and I realize there are a lot of way showers in my life. I don't know if you've had this kind of epiphany. Man, I've had a lot of people who've inspired me. But I started thinking about mainly my spiritual journey, and I kind of narrowed it down to my journey since I joined Unity. So I'm kind of narrowing my frame of reference here for today's message on the way showers of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. From the poems of Khalil Gibran, which I shared one of them with you during your meditation, to the recordings and writings of Reverend Eric Butterworth, to the TED Talks by Brene Brown. And even though I'm not going to speak about her today, even the art installations of Yayi Kusama have been inspirational. There's just a wide range of people that I have been inspired by in my lifetime. But I want to share a handful with you today. I've selected five individuals to share with you today for the way showers of my journey. And you'll notice I've kind of broken this into time, so I'm going to first speak about yesterday. So when considering the way showers of yesterday, who am I talking about? I'm talking about those individuals who have been kind of in our recent spiritual mayu, but who are no longer with us. Those whose writings and teachings have been passed down to us. We still have access to their teachings, but not access to their presence. So those are those individuals who are no longer with us. Now, since joining Unity in 2015, I've had a lot of inspiration. There have been a lot of new thought uh, and leaders, spiritual teachers, who I've come across. And I could spend several weeks up here discussing all of them. But alas, we don't have the time to do that today. So today, I'm just selecting a handful. Now, you might be surprised if I don't speak about the writings of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, H. Emily Cady, or Ernest Holmes today. And while they certainly have impacted my spiritual journey since joining Unity, I want to speak about another individual. And that is Reverend Eric Butterworth. So for those who don't know about this individual in unity, the kind of way shower he was, um, I want to just express that I found his writings to be an entry point into unity teachings. They're more accessible. They're in modern and contemporary language. They're a little bit easier to understand than the writings of Charles and Myrtle, as much as I love the writings of those early New Thought uh, leaders. And so they're also easier to share and discuss with others to, to actually understand, especially if you're new to unity or new to new thought. Now, I want to share um, one title in particular. Uh, Reverend Eric Butterworth's book, Discover the Power Within You. This was my entry point into unity uh, teachings, into new thought principles. And so this late Unity Minister's prolific wisdom and understanding comes through with this work. He talks about some new thought principles, that idea of the law of mind action. You heard that in the introduction. Well, what is that? That is the idea that our ability to create our experience begins with the mind. That through the mind, we have the ability 
to alter our thinking and by altering our thinking we alter our experience if we want more positivity in our life we think more positive thoughts right we start by changing the habits of the mind he also spoke in this book a little bit also about the law of compensation we'll be talking a little bit more about gratitude and generosity next month in our new series on the spirit of gratitude but what is the law of compensation it's this idea that you reap what you sow or what you give you receive you get into this cycle of generosity the cycle of giving and one of the things that i love about his work is that he gives you context for all these teachings through the lens of Jesus' teachings. So if you enjoyed Bill Warner's talk last week about the secret teachings of Jesus and you said, hey, I want to learn more about how Jesus' demonstration about his life, how his teachings could be applied to my own life, this is a good place to start. So in this book, Eric Butterworth proclaims, quote, Jesus had a unique concept of God. We learned some of this last week through Bill Warner's talk. He goes on to say, to him, God was not an object of worship, but a presence dwelling in us, a force surrounding us, and a principle by which we live. God is that principle by which we live. Butterworth goes on to say, Jesus' unique concept of God reveals a new concept of prayer. So if we shift our understanding about God, then we also shift our understanding about prayer. He goes on to say, prayer has usually been directed at God. A typical prayer begs and pleads. It's couched in pious language. It's carefully intoned. It uses vain repetition. But he goes on to say, in Jesus' concept, prayer is not for God, but for you. Think about that. If God is in you, expressing as you, then prayer isn't about a connection with something outside of yourself. It's a connection with that indwelling divine presence. He goes on to say, you pray not to change something out there in God mind but in your own mind it's a really powerful understanding and it really does encompass much of our five principles much of what we teach here in unity now I'm going to be honest with you Reverend Eric Butterworth's book his perspective in this book made me reconsider the teachings of Jesus in my teens, in my 20s, I turned away from Christianity. I was like, nope, that pathway's not for me. I'm not interested. There was too much hellfire, too much damnation, too much negativity. And so I turned away from the teacher without truly understanding the teachings. And isn't that where a lot of us came to unity? It's because we turned away from the teacher without truly understanding the teachings. So he demonstrated, Eric Butterworth, through his book, a new way to understand Jesus' teachings for me. It's one based on an internal pathway, one of changing the mind, changing one's perspective, renewing the mind, so that you can have a better experience, a more loving, God-like experience here in this earth. Now, since reading his book, I've certainly been inspired by other things that he has, that he published over his lifetime. And I'm thinking specifically about his recordings, a, a certain series called The Antecedents of New Thought. Now, The Antecedents of New Thought is available on truthunity.net. I've listened to it several times. And through that, 
it really interested the historian and the anthropologist in me because he talks about how these strings of new thought, which aren't really new, they've been around for a long, long time, have bubbled up over the years. And so he looks at the patterns of this, how new thought teachings and principles have shown up throughout recorded history and throughout recorded philosophy. So if you happen to be a history buff like I am, and you're interested in learning more about kind of new thought principles, that's another way to do so. Overall, Reverend Eric Butterworth is just down to earth in the way that he presents new thought principles, new thought teachings. And these teachings still resonate with us today. Now, I'm going to go to my next way shower. So sometime between the years of 2014 and 2015, about the time that I started at Unity, I was introduced to the long departed poet, and I consider him a fellow creative, Khalil Gibran. You may not realize this, but he's also a visual artist, or he was a visual artist, so a lot of his illustrations, a lot of his paintings are in his book. And so if you've never had an opportunity to look at his work, his creativity, it expands out of just writing into art. But my gateway into Khalil Gibran's work, his beautiful lyrics, his insightful poems, came through an animated movie. It's titled The Prophet. And for those of you who have been around this Unity for a while, you might remember a time where I actually did a presentation on that animated movie and talked about New Thought and Unity principles as they show up in that movie. It's a long time ago, back when we were on Lisenby. It's been a while. For those who have never seen the animated movie, it is a beautiful experience. It's a nice entrance way into Khalil Gibran's work. It's beautiful animations along with musical adaptations of his poetry. So if you like music, if you enjoy the uh, poems of Khalil Gibran, this is another, another wonderful way shower. But one of the things is that I've continued to read and reread his work over and over and over again. It's, I always seem to get something new from his poems something that I didn't see before. And so that's why I wanted to share one with you during the meditation today. Khalil Gibran's words are beautifully balanced. He balances this human experience that we are living in, all the complexity of this human experience with the spiritual journey. He really speaks to both aspects of who we are as expressions of the divine. His words speak to our human desires, but they also speak to our innate inner wisdom, our understanding, our divine qualities of love and compassion and hope and joy. Reading his words, to me, is like reading a contemporary book of Psalms. Again and again, I find myself drawn back to his words as a reminder of the beauty, of the balance, of the paradox, of the complexity of the human experience, because we are spiritual beings having this human experience. Another way shower on my journey is the late and venerable Zen Buddhist monk and teacher Thich Nhat Hanh. I remember that we were in the temple when he passed away. Um, it's about the time frame of several years ago. And I remember how impactful that was on me to lose him as a way shower in some ways, even though his works still resonate with us here today. I consider his works to be one that really push you for inner contemplation, inner reflection, and of course they are always inspiring. Now, have I read all of his books? No. Do I hope to someday? Yes. 
There's a lot of publications that he left to us, but I have read several of his books, and I've listened to a number of his recorded lectures of his Dharma talks, and I love listening and going back to some of the ones where it's just like, I got it the first time, but I need to be reminded again. Now, one of his books that I have gone to again and again and again, and I've actually taught and facilitated a class here based on this book, is The Energy of Prayer, How to Deepen Your Spiritual Practice. This is a very powerful book. This book got me to a place where I could explore prayer practice once again. I gave up prayer when I gave up a Christian concept of God. And so my concept of God changed, but my vision of prayer, my understanding of prayer did not change with it. And it took me a while to get there. I was a meditator. I was proud of that. I almost viewed meditation as almost above prayer. I was going deeper. I was contemplating more profound things than I had ever contemplated in prayer. But oh, how I had a wrong perception of what a prayer practice could be. His work made me reconsider the practice of prayer, how it didn't have to be about beseeching something outside of yourself. It didn't have to be about just rote memorization that no longer aligned with my concept of God. It was about curiosity. It was about questioning. It was about listening. It was about being one with all that is. It really was an exploration. So his book helped me really bridge the gap between my prayer and my meditation practice. So rather than just see prayer as communing with something outside of myself and meditation as listening and going within, I actually viewed these things now as one. So I can commune with that divine presence within myself, with that oneness that we all are, and I can listen to that oneness and the wisdom it holds in the same breath. These things are not separate. Prayer and meditation, in my mind, are now the same. My longer meditations, I see them now as prayers. My shorter prayers, I still see as meditations. One of the other things that the Venerable Thich Nhat Hanh, his teachings allowed me to do is to balance my Buddhist teachings, my Buddhist beliefs that I had picked up with this new world of new thought principles and practices that I had been exposed to. And there were times where it's like, hmm, those two things seem to conflict. Those two things might not always feel aligned, but seeing it through Thich Nhat Hanh's lens made me realize that these are parallel paths that I can walk simultaneously. I can walk in the paradox of all that is this human experience. Both practices ultimately are focused on the power of the mind our ability to transform our mind and thus transform our experience. So now I'm going to shift to some way showers of today. And I've only reflected on two of these individuals and voices who are still alive, who still continue to inspire my journey through new insights, new wisdom, new understanding. I'm going to start with Reverend Dr. Martha Creek. Now, I was introduced to her about the time many of you probably were, if you were with us at Lisenby. She came in early 2019, right before we sold our building. She helped us through part of that transition. And it was really inspirational to hear her speak. She is a minister, she's a teacher, she's a public speaker, she's a facilitator of spiritual education, she's a spiritual coach. She is a woman of many, many hats. 
whose mission it is to serve those who serve others. She's made it her mission to serve ministers and teachers and those who are showing up to serve others every day. But here's the thing, she is also a fellow creative. She shares my passion for the photographic arts. And so she takes photos and she shares them as part of her spiritual journey. So one of the things that has really affected me about Reverend Dr. Martha Creek's teachings on New Thought Truths, whether it's a Sunday message or rather it's some of her shorts, is just how authentically and honestly she shows up when she shares her way with others, when she shares her work through her ministry. I have yet to find somebody who is a way shower that shows up as authentically, as honestly as Martha Creek does. Her teachings are practical, they're straightforward, they're forthright, they're authentic, they're going to ask you to question your perspective, they're going to ask you to question your truths and your beliefs. They're about self-awareness. She doesn't pull punches when she teaches. She'll make you laugh, she'll make you cry, sometimes within the same five minutes. But she dives into the depths of what it means to be a spiritual being having this human experience. And it is her example, as I've talked to Reverend Ron about several times, that I hope to follow in my own pathway into ministry. I want to be that authentic. I want to be that honest. I want to be that courageous and that vulnerable. I want to lean into my authentic voice and bring my gifts to the table like she does. Does that mean I want to be just like her? No. But that authenticity is something to be admired and looked to. The last voice I'm going to share with you today is that of Brene Brown. Dr. Brene Brown is a researcher, storyteller, and public speaker who has spent the last two decades researching really deep and difficult topics like courage, vulnerability, shame, and empathy. She's another one who really asks you to do the inner work and to show up. And for me, it is her courage that really inspires me. Her courage to share her life, her experience with others, even in those moments where the audience isn't receptive to her message, even in those moments where people have commented negatively about the work that she's doing, she still shows up. She still is vulnerable. She still demonstrates courage. So I want to share with you one of my favorite quotes from Brene Brown. I actually have it saved as a reel on my Facebook, and I go in and I watch it every now and again when I need this to remember. And it really speaks, this quote, to this idea that as divine beings, as an expression of the divine, we are worthy. We are enough just by being here. She says, don't walk through the world looking for evidence that you don't belong because you'll always find it. Don't walk through the world looking for evidence that you're not enough because you'll always find it. Our worth and our belonging are not negotiated with other people. We carry those inside of our hearts. Now, she is not a New Thought minister, but the currents of New Thought are definitely there. This idea of this indwelling divine presence, this worthiness within us, that it's an inward journey. We are going from in to without rather than from the outside in. Her research, her experience has helped me to contemplate my own self-awareness, my own self-perspective and self-view, my own self-talk. We all have that inner critic. We all have that voice that tells us sometimes that we're not enough, that tells us that we're not worthy. And so her work 
along with the works of many, many others, has helped me dive into that self-awareness so that I can realize that inner voice might be there, but it's not truth. I am worthy. I am enough. I am learning that vulnerability, like being up here and sharing some of my way showers with you, it's not a bad word. It's not a negative idea, vulnerability. And through vulnerability, I'm learning to be my more authentic self. So you might be asking, who are the way showers of tomorrow? That was in the title, right? So I'm not going to leave you hanging. Here's the truth. I don't know who those way showers are. It might be you. It might be me. It might be the baby who's just now taking its first breath. These are individuals whose voices might just now be breaking through the ether. These are individuals who are just maybe now starting to share their gifts with the world. Maybe it's the teenager who's come to a new understanding. Maybe it's the mother who is in her 40s or 50s or 60s or even 70s who's come to a new understanding about herself and that divine indwelling place within her. So she is sharing her story with courage and vulnerability. Now, these way showers, they might be ministers, they might be spiritual leaders, they might just be teachers or researchers, they might be artists or writers, they might share any number of roles, they might just be business professionals. Here's the thing, we're not going to know these way showers until we find them. And you might be asking now, well, how do we find these way showers? It's our ability to continue to be open, open to new lessons, open to truth, open to seeing things from a new perspective, to saying, oh, I didn't see that before, but I see that now. Having that ability to keep learning, to being open to learning, that is when we're going to see those way showers travel across our path. I don't know who the way showers of tomorrow it are, but I do know that when I see them, I'm going to help raise their voices. When their message resonates with me, I'm going to bring them to the table. I'm going to share them with others. I'm going to willingly and openly share their message, share their truth, their authenticity, so that people like you, people like me, can consider their words, their teachings, their actions, and say, hey, does their pathway parallel my own? Do I find some truth in this? I want to thank you for joining me here today on my journey into the way showers of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I hope that you will be opening yourself to discovering and learning from not just the way showers that I've introduced to you today, but the way showers of tomorrow as well. Namaste. Thank you so much, Melissa. Again, another round of applause for Melissa and that message. Yes. All right. Okay, uh, now it is time to enter into giving consciousness. And we'd like to thank, uh, thank you to all of you who have continued uh, blessing our spiritual community with your tithes and offerings. We are truly blessed by your giving. And if you feel led by spirit to give today, we invite you to prepare your gift now. Um, and if you are being led to make a recurring gift, you can visit our website to set up a monthly uh, gift via PayPal. Uh, we now invite you to hold the thought of your gift in your hand um, or in your mind and in your heart as we say our offering blessing together. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Amen. All right, can ask the music team to come back up.
I dreamed of rain and the rains came Soft and easy, sweet and clear I dreamed of rain and the rains came And peace spread over the land I dreamed of summer and the winds changed And the green was easy and the rivers ran clear I dreamed of summer and the winds changed And peace spread over the land And the flowers bloom in the desert And the air is fresh and clear I dreamed of rain and the rains came And peace spread over the land I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose And the way was easy and the path was clear I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose And peace spread over the land And the guardian stars are shining And the night is bright and clear I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose And peace spread over the land I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang And the sound was easy and the song was clear I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang And peace spread over the land And the ancient pain is forgotten And the Father's debts are clear I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang And peace spread over the land I dreamed of rain and the rains came Soft and easy, sweet and clear I dreamed of rain and the rains came And peace spread over the land And peace spread over the land And peace spread over the land Okay, we're coming to the end of our service today, and certainly we want to <laughs> we want to thank a lot of people today, um, including Melissa. Thank you so much for your message today, Melissa, and Rosalita. You did a wonderful job again as our platform assistant. We 